it's not expected to outgrow the semiconductor industry over the next five to 10 years. So it seems like a very, very high premium. As we've talked about, it's an interesting company because of their revenue mix or lack thereof. This is what we're not saying. We're not saying it's a bad company. We're not saying the stock is going to do poorly. All we want to emphasize here is this is why it doesn't meet our personal criteria. Welcome back everyone to Chip Stock Investor. Today we're going to touch on a few companies that we get a lot of questions about. Arm Holding, Super Micro Computers, and Excellus. And we'll throw in a little bonus in ACM research as well. Let's start at the top of the industry flow chart in the patents and licensing portion of the industry with Arm Holding. This company had a stock rally at the end of 2023. Do we think that can continue into 2024, Nick? We're not so sure. So this is a foundational business. Arm, of course, owns a lot of IP tied, especially to the smartphone industry, Apple, lots of Android chips based on Arm architecture, basically all smartphones and mobile devices based on Arm chips. And the reason for that rally at the end of the year is it looks like we are going to get much healthier inventory in smartphone and PC chips in 2024, which could set the stage for maybe the next run of growth. We talked about this a bit more extensively with that Qualcomm video, which of course uses ARM architecture to design uh, a lot of its Snapdragon chips. We'll keep this one real simple and brief, Casey. For us, we have always had this longstanding rule of thumb to wait at least a year after an IPO before buying a stock. And at this point, as 2023 came to a close, ARM was up 20% over the IPO price when SoftBank spun off a bit of its holding in ARM. But this really comes down to valuation for us, and this tends to happen the first year a company goes public or republic, in this case with ARM, because SoftBank acquired it a number of years ago. As of this recording here in mid-January, ARM holding trades for about 100 times expected free cash flow for 2024. That's our estimate, right? What we're basically taking is ARM's free cash flow from the last quarter, which was 193 million and multiplying it by four to get an annualized free cash flow of about 770 million. And based on the market cap right now, that's about a hundred times one year annualized free cash flow. Suffice to say, I think that's a very, very steep price. Casey, we did an update on ARM a number of months ago after the IPO. And in its own admission, over the long term, ARM is probably going to be an industry perform business. It's not expected to outgrow the semiconductor industry over the next five to 10 years. So it seems like a very, very high premium. I'm sure SoftBank is very happy about that and wouldn't be surprised to see them sell off more of their position to rake in some more cash. So no, we don't think this rally in ARM stock can continue. Arm Holding had that investment into Ampere Computing valued at around $6 billion. Does that affect our decision on the stock at all? No, no, it does not. Uh, maybe just brief background. Ampere Computing is a startup. They design ARM-based chips for high-performance compute data center applications. CEO, founder, Rene James, former executive at Intel. Ampere is supposedly preparing its own IPO. I think we wrote about this close to two years ago now. We'd be interested in Ampere Computing. So far, no dice. We're not buying ARM stock just so that we can get a small ancillary play on Ampere. Let's talk about the next two companies that fall into that chip manufacturing equipment portion of the semiconductor industry, Excellus Technologies and ACM Research. What are our updates on that, Nick, before they have their earnings reports? Well, to be fair, we don't know what to expect exactly from Excellus. But here's what we think we do know. Management had said it expects revenue of 1.1 billion or more for 2023. And they have not changed that outlook that was provided at the very beginning of November. They did have a press release here a few weeks ago in December saying that they shipped more of their ion implant machines. And we're talking about this, I think, as it goes a bit hand in hand with air test systems. This is very much a play on the growth of the silicon carbide market 
and power chips for things like electric vehicles, for the energy grid, industrial equipment, and so forth. So I, I would venture to say, based on the fact that they shipped more of those ion implant machines, a type of machine that competes with applied materials, we've got this other slide here that shows you the ion implant and where that falls into the steps in manufacturing wafers. Based on that announcement, we think they'll probably meet their guidance, but then headed into 2024, based on what air test systems just said, we would not be surprised if some of Excellus's same customers, remember, this is again, another silicon carbide play, same customers on semi, wolf speed. Uh, most of the IDMs are getting involved in this space some way, somehow. We would not be surprised if they push out some of their orders further out into calendar year 2024. We'd be a little bit worried that maybe Excellus's growth rate, at the very least, flattens a bit after an exceptional 2023. And I think that's basically what the market has been anticipating. As we said earlier last year, starting last summer, paying a very high 20s or low 30s PE and price to free cash flow for a company like this at the peak, at the top of a cyclical peak is a bit dangerous. And the stock has come down since. So let's see what happens. Let's see what they provide in the way of guidance for 2024. Let's briefly touch on ACM research also in that semiconductor manufacturing equipment space. They get most of their revenue from China. We've talked about that in a couple of videos. As we've talked about, it's an interesting company because of their revenue mix or lack thereof. What do we see in the earnings coming up for them? So this is a different type of equipment. Again, looking at the wafer fab equipment steps here, they actually fall kind of on the left side right after ASML's big giant purple box. ACM Research is a, a niche. They do mostly cleaning, wafer cleaning equipment, which sounds super dumb and boring, but it's a critical step. They compete with Tokyo Electron and LAM Research in this department. They're getting into uh, some other areas as well, track systems, vapor deposition systems. But you mentioned the, ex the outsized exposure to China. That actually sounds like it's paying off for them still because they provided an initial outlook for 2024 just a few days ago. And they actually expect at least 20% growth in sales in 2024 to at least 650 million next year. Now, the stock didn't really jump dramatically in response to that because that's actually what Wall Street was already expecting. It was already expecting roughly 20% or better revenue growth in 2024. Thus, ACM research stock not skyrocketing more, but this is a different type of equipment, plays in a different market tied a little bit more closely to the lithography type of the market. And as you probably know, ASML holding, shipping a lot of new equipment to Intel and probably a lot more uh, of the advanced lithography systems to Taiwan Semi, to Samsung in the coming years. So maybe ACM Research still getting that tailwind from its customers in China as they try to get as much lithography equipment as they can get their hands on right now. Probably have to do uh, some more updates on this, though, after ASML reports earnings in, in a couple of weeks. OK, last one in our video today, super microcomputer. Where does this fall in the semiconductor industry, Nick? So this is over on the right, tech equipment and devices. This one's funny, Casey. This is, I think, probably the most frequent question that we get asked. What about super microcomputer? Our thoughts have not changed from the video we did last autumn. A number of months ago. Yes, this is a contract manufacturer, but it does not fall under the wafer fab and contract manufacturers in the chart. Those are companies like Taiwan Semi Manufacturing that are contracted to, to manufacture the wafers themselves or package the chips up. Uh, Super Microcomputer is more an assembler, an original equipment manufacturer or original device manufacturer. Basically, they take those finished parts and they assemble them together. Maybe they provide a little bit of, of service as well to their customers before those servers get shipped to their data center customers. This is more a competitor against HP Enterprise, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Dell, and Lenovo, and companies like that. Real brief here, you can see the pretty slim profit margins for these companies. Typically, like your Dell and your HPE, a mid-single-digit gap operating profit margin. Supermicro has ratcheted its margins up to a high single digit percentage during the AI boom here in the last year. 
but I think this is a little maybe financial investigative work here. There's a reason why these margins tend to be just single digit for a company like Super Microcomputer. And Casey, maybe we can just show the paragraph in the 10K that is highly relevant. We'll just reshare this like we did last year. They say this, we seek to protect our intellectual property rights with a combination of patents, trademarks, copyrights, trade secret laws, and disclosure restrictions. We rely primarily on trade secrets, technical know-how, and other unpatented proprietary information relating to our design and product development activities. So the way I read this, there's no patent protection on some of their work. Yeah. And just to be clear, this is what we're not saying. We're not saying Supermicro is a bad company. We're not saying the stock is going to do poorly. All we want to emphasize here is this is why it doesn't meet our personal criteria. They are an assembler of equipment. They actually rely heavily on the patents and processes of their customers, your NVIDIAs, your AMDs, your Intels, as well as the manufacturing processes of the contract manufacturers that make the wafers and package the chips that show up at Supermicro's assembly facilities. When we're looking for a, a foundational hardware business to invest in, we like something that owns its own tech. And so y'all probably know that we already own ample amounts of NVIDIA and AMD. They own the majority of these patents and intellectual property rights that Supermicro relies on. It essentially makes Supermicro a bit of an ancillary play on your semiconductor companies. And I think the, the argument that's often pointed out here, Casey, is Supermicro is cheap relative to NVIDIA and AMD. That's absolutely true. The stock appears to trade for just shy of 17 times 2024 expected earnings per share. Far, far, far less than NVIDIA and AMD, especially after NVIDIA's yet another 10% rise in the early weeks of 2024. Yes, Supermicro is relatively cheap. It could do very well in 2024, but this doesn't do anything for our portfolio. It doesn't add to our diversification. It doesn't add a new growth driver because if Supermicro is doing well, it's probably because NVIDIA and AMD are doing well. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think this comes down to something a wise friend of ours said. It's sometimes it's not this and that, it's this or that, right? We can't own every single stock in the semiconductor world. We have to pick and choose what we want invested in our portfolio. And this one just doesn't add anything to our specific portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. We are not betting against super microcomputer. Again, it could do very, very well this year and well into the future. Maybe just one more thing to add that actually could be a positive for Supermicro that we fully acknowledge. One of its key competitors, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, just announced this week that it's making a very large 14 billion acquisition of Juniper Networks. Juniper Networks does not help them in the assembly of AI servers. Juniper Networks competes with Arista Networks. Another one that we own, Arista Networks, the market share eater of the networking device, your switches and your routers used in data centers to help manage the flow of information. Very important equipment in this new computing era driven by AI. So maybe Hewlett Packard taking its eye off the ball a little bit here, and that could actually help Supermicro out going forward a little bit, because I don't think Juniper Networks plus HPE is going to be able to catch Arista Networks. So just something worth mentioning here that could be good news for those betting on super microcomputer. We wish you the best over the long term with that one. We have nothing against that company. Okay, I think we've covered it. Our top stocks we get asked about in comments. If you have other questions or other companies that you have questions about, let us know in the comments. We always appreciate well thought out questions and comments. Thank you very much for making this a semiconductor community. And just as a reminder, if you don't have it yet, the semiconductor industry flow for 2024 manual is on our Kofi shop. It has a ton of information on all of these companies that we're talking about and a breakdown of how these companies make money and what things you need to think about when making a decision as to whether that company should be in your portfolio. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure you have notifications enabled. Nick posts a ton of stuff on our community board. 
we sometimes have our ramblings on there. Stay tuned for LAM research and we still need to talk about media companies and we have earnings coming up, so it's gonna be busy. We'll see you all again very soon here at Chipstock Investor.